Welcome back to Kevin Pollock's chat show. Sorry to disappoint yet again. It's not Kevin. If you didn't know that, by the way, immediately by the sound of my voice and not Kevin's, I, it's weird that I had to tell you I'm not Kevin. You must be a first-time listener, in which case, welcome and I'm sorry in advance. Uh, I'm Sam Levine, and uh, I'm sitting in for uh, my dear pal Kevin, who is off uh, shooting in New York yet again, but not on The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. No, he's shooting on a different program, and I don't know if I am at liberty to say what. Also, he may not have told me. So one of those two things is true. I leave it to you to figure it out. Uh, but I am not alone in the booth. I, I didn't come here to just give my thoughts to you, our wonderful, loyal listeners. I am joined by friend of the show, friend of mine, longtime friend of Kevin's, friend to all of those who enjoy comedy yep. and motion pictures, ladies and gentlemen, the man, the myth, the legend, Wayne Fetterman. I can hear the turning off of uh, computers How, across the country. That's, this is nonsense. The you, clicking. you speak of nonsense. The Any, here's the thing. I want. I like to imagine, and I think this is more than just a theory, that with any medium, uh, you have the super fans. And I believe podcasts have their own super fans. There are people who are very familiar with the podcasting world, and these people have heard you on countless podcasts, True. and they love you, Wayne. True, I've done numerous podcasts. Yes, well known but for I your feel podcasting prowess. Like, I feel like Kevin, prowess. since his, he's on this very successful show, mm -hmm. do you just mention, what's it called again? It's called The Marvelous Mrs. Yes. Maisel. About female stand-up comedian yes. in the 50s. Yes. I can't say comedian, but I can make it longer to describe what that is. Sure. Right, because I don't want to offend anyone. Uh, we appreciate that. Um, I feel like his guests have really picked up a little bit. Am I wrong about that? I mean, here's the thing. I can't <laughs> agree or disagree okay, with you okay. because it would impugn yes, either yeah. our current or previous guests. All right, you're right. You're right. So um, That was a bad I could, Let's take it over. Yes. Yeah. Can we start this? No. We, we can if you no, really want, want to. I don't, I don't want, want to either. Look, I mean, here's the thing. While – here's what I will say. We certainly have guests that are perhaps more recognizable in name okay. only. It's all right. It's uh, all right. Uh, as, as the show has, has come and gone over the years, you know, as we've had guests come and go. But um, in terms of Jesus, bigger names or whatever – Well, no, fuck you. You, uh, you, you threw that out me okay, and, right. and now I'm trying to help you out. No, just move on. Move on. We get it. You can't talk about it. No, I can't. Because it's going to hurt somebody's it's no, I'm not going to hurt anybody. What I'm saying is I don't think people are tuning out when they see, when they see your name. They know they're about to get a good okay, show. All right. Let's do it. Guys, sorry to disappoint already. Let's wow. start. What's the first question? No, I meant with my first answer was disappointing. Go ahead. Okay. The first question. Now, yes. I told you I have you, – you mocked me. I have no notes because I said when, when I asked you to come on and be my guest today, I said I don't need notes with you. Do it. You and I could sit and have a lovely conversation. But I do have a question for you. And my question is you, Wayne Fetterman – Yeah. Recently, much to the shock of everyone in the entertainment is business who knows you, mm -hmm. the industry started your own podcast, something you swore, you swore to the heavens above would never happen. Well, first of all, <laughs> that is that is true. You said it to my face when I asked you to do a podcast with me eight years ago. Go ahead, deny this is, it. First of all, this is my second podcast. Go I've ahead. already done another podcast. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that first one. That's that's the knife that I that's still in my back. Yeah, that's the human conversation. That's right. So yes, I've started, and we're about this Tuesday. We'll drop the last of season one, which is six episodes. We oh, excuse me, we're going to do a bonus. Oh. Live recording, but basically right. six episodes. Okay, and what is this new, this second podcast of yours that I'm still not involved in? Right. In spite of the fact that I was the first person to say, Wayne, you and I should do a podcast. We'll call it, do you remember what we were going to call it? We were going to call it Fetterman and Levine Discuss. Oh, I see. I yeah. See. I see. And you said, it's the last thing I want to do as a podcast. It's so much work. It's this, that, the other. I said, we'll do it like a magazine. We'll do it quarterly. We'll literally put out one every three months. And you're like, eh, I, I, I don't know. I, no, I, I don't think I'm ever going to I feel like my instinct was correct. To say no to me? <laughs> I feel like that was correct. Wow. We've already done – we've done a chat show already together. Yeah. You and I? Yes. I don't remember that. Wow. Interesting. No, I kid. Okay. So, um, so your new podcast, please tell us about that. It is called The History of Stand-Up. Not The History of Comedy. No. The history of stand-up. Okay. We're doing a six 
part overview. It mm-hmm. goes from basically vaudeville to Netflix. Mm-hmm. And then when we're done with that, if we get a second season, or can I say the other now? It's yeah, a, yes, it's you a, can say where wanna, people can find it. It's fine. It's just the usual place you would find it. But it's the Podglomerate is the okay. name of the – have you ever heard of them? I uh, No, I was unfamiliar with them. Yeah. So um, so they're doing it. And, and that's it. We did six. We, we will have done six on Tuesday. We're still in editing of episode number six. Wow. Yeah. It's really exciting. Now, those are very uh, heavily produced episodes. Mm-hmm. I, I will say that. It's not, it's not just you and me sitting here shooting the shit. Right. It's uh, – you got, you've got clips. It's not Fetterman and Levine discuss things. You don't – it wasn't – there was no things in the title. It was Fetterman and Levine discuss. <laughs> okay, sorry. And it was going to be you and I <laughs> having is... the conversations that you and I have for free with no audience. Right. When we hang out at parties and such, which uh, other people have said to us when they would walk in on our conversations, they would go, this should be a podcast. That's why – that's where that happened, Wayne. We weren't just whistling Dixie. No. Have you ever whistled Dixie? Yeah, I can actually play Dixie. Yeah? Can you whistle a little bit of Dixie? (laughs) (laughs) Thank you so much. Oh, I was going to do the break. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, we we literally just whistled Dixie. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're welcome. For that. You're welcome. <laughs> oh, that's if I if I were going to put together a podcast reel, by the way, <laughs> that's I'm, on it. I'm a little I just ate as you know at Arby's, so my <laughs> not right. I didn't know it was going to be called a bundle of whistles. So it's not wet. My whistle isn't wet. Oh. Thank you for that. All You're right. Welcome. Well, as as I was saying, attempting to say, yeah. so yours is a very heavily produced podcast. I love it. I am curious. Uh, yeah. The idea behind this podcast, where did it come from? I'll tell you. Um, the guy, I'm, I'm doing it with like a millennial comedy nerd, mm-hmm. okay? So he doesn't know a lot. No. He thinks Dimitri Martin's an old comedian. Sure. And – we did. He used to work for another company. I don't know if I'm not allowed to say it, but I'm going to say you it. You can say any names you it's want. It's called CISO. Okay. They're since def- – Yeah, they – they, 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 they folded. folded. Unfortunately folded Year Wolf shop. crushed yeah. them. Yeah. So – Yeah. Uh, so he uh, he was doing an uh, – they were doing a series about The Tonight Show. I think Paul Reiser was in it. Wow. And anyway, they had some podcasts that went along with it that he was producing, mm-hmm. and one of them he brought me in to talk about one of the great moments of stand, modern stand-up, which was from December 1973, when Freddie Prinz goes on The Tonight Show. Sure. Yeah, so we talk about that, and then when I, I go, all right, this is fun, we kind of bantered a little bit, mm-hmm. but then when I heard it, he had the clip of the thing, had Carson introducing him, he had some music, a music bed. Wow. It was like NPR- Near NPR level. So I was like, oh, I'm enjoying this. Because I just feel like this place is loaded with this kind of podcast. Yeah. This, the podcast world is loaded with it. Right? Just two, two, two idiots talking. Two white guys talking. Two like it's white just, guys <laughs> just like whistling the whole, Dixie. The whole thing. No, no, no. I oh, wasn't. God, no, sorry, no, no, we already got it. We'll, 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 okay. we'll cut it in again. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, so the, so then he came to me and he said this company approached him, or I guess he pitched the eye okay. to do a series called The History of Stand-Up. In the meantime, since I had done the Freddie Brands one, yeah. my life changed. Changed. Like, like Freddie Prince's life changed after oh, doing that not, set. Not quite like that, but oh, yes, okay. it, it did change. It All did right. change. Uh, and I started teaching stand-up, advanced stand-up and comedy history at University of Southern California. USC. It's crazy, right? That is bananas. <laughs> bananas bonkers. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So that is – so now I have this weird credential. Mm-hmm. I'm no more knowledgeable than I was before I oh, started teaching. Yeah, but that, but, but that do not impugn yourself. You were extraordinarily knowledgeable before you started teaching. Right, right, right. So uh, I don't want to go off on a tangent, but I will. Yeah. So how did that come about that you wound up now teaching a course? I will tell you. Please do, I Wayne. will tell you. Um, If anyone cares. I care. It all goes back to a comedian actor named Craig Anton. Are you familiar with him? No, you're not. Yes, you are. I I am familiar with Craig Anton. Anyway, he was on a number of Disney shows. He did stand-up. He started this stand-up course at USC. I don't know how he got in. He brings me in as a guest lecturer. Okay. I wow the kids with my knowledge, and I'm funny, and I— 
I just, I feel like I, if I may compliment myself. I wish you would. This is my one thing that I will compliment myself on is that I do feel like I, I, there's a thing that when people reach a certain age, they start behaving like an adult. Ooh. And I don't think I – like I still remember exactly what it's like to be in middle school or oh. high school or college. Okay. So I'm very good at connecting. I know this sounds slightly predatory, but I'm very good at per- connecting with younger yeah. people. So, it didn't sound predatory until you said that. Now now that's so, all I think. Well, if you saw the van and the – Okay. Well, <laughs> but <laughs> saw my new van, you would have a whole different that's view That's a pretty kick-ass van, i got to tell you. <laughs> so that's – so that's uh, – so I did great with them, and okay. then they were like, this stand-up class is doing great. They hired another person to teach the class, and then they came to me and said, would you teach level two? You have to go through level one to get to Professor oh Fetterman. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> this is insane. I know. I know. I know. I, now, I guess, given that USC is a private university – 100% private. This is going to sound silly. So they could literally ask anyone to just – teach a class and come it's up called, with a curriculum? It's called an adjunct professor. Ah, okay. I'm not a real professor. You're, I could but just, yeah. adjunct is an adjective, correct? That's a type of professor. I believe so. Um, so um, so I, I, if I say I'm a professor, I'm not lying. You're not, no. I'm not being completely truthful. Right. It's like saying if Dr. Dre was like, I'm a doctor. No, that's not what it is. But he's technically Dr. Dre. Well, that's it. Yeah, that's his stage name. I'm just like, yeah, Count Basie was an account. I love doing the new references. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> Can we conf- check Snopes? I told you, kids love me. Check Snopes. Was Count Basie really a count? No? No. Okay. <laughs> I don't think Duke Ellington was a Duke. Was a Duke? Again, what? I'm great with kids. <laughs> <laughs> they love my references. Sure. Was the I, peppermint- I, I hate to brag, but was, as you can see, how I, good yes, I am. Yes, was the peppermint twist made out of peppermint? Yeah, I, who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Okay, I see I'm good with the kids, too. So that's so, that's what's uh, – so I still say – I call myself a professor even though – I do. I guess I am. You a, are a professor. Of sorts, of sorts. So adjunct professor, basically this is – I've been reading about it. Mm-hmm. is a thing that's happened a lot on college campus where they have professionals come in yeah. and teach classes at a different rate than an actual someone who has a PhD. Oh, a different rate, meaning you don't have daily classes. No, at a different pay rate. Oh, <laughs> Do you have daily classes? I have one day a week. I only teach in the spring on Fridays, Friday mornings. Ah. Which just hurt my touring a little bit. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, uh, but, I mean, it's – and in the end, while it's a personal sacrifice you are making from your own bank account by not being able to tour on Fridays and, and travel on Fridays, do you get the satisfaction – of knowing that you are helping to inform and shape the comedians of tomorrow? Um, it's mixed, to be honest. Okay. It's mixed. There, I want you to be honest. There's a few kids in there that are very talented. Yeah. Of the t- We had about 20 or so in the class. And then there are a few that are just kind of just curious or right. thought the other stand-up class was fun. I'll take yeah. this one. They just came in to laugh. Right. And so it's, uh, I, it's not like everyone's a committed comedy nerd like I was in college. Okay. So uh, if you are allowed to say, I mean, I don't want you to give away the farm here. I'm curious <laughs> what, what is, in your, is in Professor Fetterman's curriculum. Well, I have something called a syllabus. I'm familiar with I, the syllabus. Literally, that's – if I was Steve Allen, I would do, but I took some pills and it's flaring <laughs> up. Like that would be a Steve Allen joke. <laughs> this is what you learn in my class. <laughs> I have a syllabus, but uh, yeah. So – and uh, this is what I do. I, it's a, basically a performance class. Mm-hmm. I want them on stage – I mean on stage, in front of the class. We have a microphone there. Mm-hmm. Just – Every week, if possible. Wow. How so, many How many are in your class? It's a three-hour class, 20. So even if it's just three minutes okay. of doing something, I think it's important just that feel of being under the light. I, again, it's a fluorescent light in a room, but just that feeling of sure. like, oh, my voice, I'm yes. hearing my voice right. reverberate in this room. Like, that's important. I tell them right at the beginning, Sam Levine? If sure. Sam, I tell them right at the beginning, I go, there's probably nothing I'm going to tell you in this class that's better than doing open mics every night of the week or okay. getting up on – there's nothing more important. Like this is one of these you have to do it to learn it. Yeah. It's like learning how to swim without going in the water. You just <laughs> – you can't do it. Yeah. So, um, so as, as simulated as our room is, and again, 
You know, the problem is the kids will laugh at certain things that are unique to the room uh, as opposed to a group of strangers right. who doesn't know what right. Renee is talking. Yeah. So yeah. it's – I. that's my big – Piece of that's my number one piece of advice is get out there is don't take this class. <laughs> oh, <laughs> now is you know if you really want to like get out there, like, right? You have to do that. Well, yeah, but I mean, I imagine you are also. Uh, I'd like to think you're also teaching like proper joke structure. Well, there's not such a thing as proper. I teach them about okay. Then proper is the wrong word. Traditional joke well, structure. Well, I taught them a little about that. I mean, we. I, this is what I do. I have them bring in a video. Excuse me, a YouTube clip. Not a video. No, video's fine. Is it, that's right. You can still say video, sure. So, and then we play for the class of a comedian they love, and then we do the comedy joke breakdown. Is yeah. he doing an act out? Is he doing uh, first person yeah, narrative? Yeah, yeah. Is he doing third person? Is it uh, doing callbacks? Right. The, what kind of language is he? So we so um, immediately I get a sense of who they like. Mm-hmm. So it's not like me going, "You got to listen to George Scarlet." You know, I'm not going to be that kind of teacher. I would hope not. Yeah. So, uh, although he would be a great per- person to teach a, just a class on, that guy alone. Oh, sure. Yeah. But that's not what this class is. Right. So, we do that. And so, yeah. So, in that sense, we do talk about joke structure and all of that. But here's my big thing that I've learned is that comedy is always changing. Mm-hmm. Like, and that's as uh, – so, we also do history of comedy just briefly kind mm-hmm. of – if you listen to my podcast, you would know that. I have listened to your podcast. Oh, no, no, no. I didn't mean you. I meant in the class. If you li- oh. if they listened, they, basically that's what they would learn. So it's uh, so we do some comedy history, and mm-hmm. it's just like that's my big takeaway, that that it's as edgy and as uh, you know offensive as something seems to be at the time or hilarious, sometimes 20, 20, a couple generations out, 20, 30 years later, it almost seems quaint and almost and not relevant. Like, it's a very in-the-moment kind of art. Absolutely. I, I would agree, you agree there with that? are Oh, I would wholeheartedly agree with that. There are remarkably few comedians who had what we would even consider to be like the landmark albums or specials that are culturally as relevant as they were. Right. I can name one there. right now. Hit me. 1996, Chris Rock, Bring the Pain. That special is, I feel like, has had a wide influence on a lot of comedians, and I think a lot of people point to that one. But it's relatively sure. that's relatively twenty-two that's years 22 ago. Twenty-two years ago, yes. Oh, I'm not saying it. Uh, maybe, maybe we're not using the same words. Oh no, that was a landmark. But still, I think it's. You still, think it's still as relevant today as it was twenty-two years ago? Well, first of ago? all, he does a bit that you could not do today. That's correct. I, I can't even say that. I can't say it either. There's no even <laughs> but way it's to a comparison of different kinds of African American people. Yes. Yeah. And you cannot – you. there's no way you could do that bit right. without being taken down by Slate magazine or whatever. Sure. Although I think maybe uh, – okay, then you and I are having two different conversations, but I agree with you on that. There was stuff said there that you could not say now, and that's sort of my point, is there's no, there's no album or special that someone did uh, two, three decades ago that if – the P, the kids in your class heard it now. It would have the same resonance with them as, as it a did. John Mulaney special, right? Right. Of course. Okay. Yeah, that's just the nature of comedy, and that, that which goes and to also your point, the way which you, is comedy is an ever changing. It's thing. an ever even the way you set up a joke or the way you get into it. If it seems to set up people recoil, it's like oh, this seems too right. presentational and not right. authentic enough. Yes. So, but then I'm sure you know it goes in cycles. But here's something. In the podcast, and maybe we can talk about it. That I would love to. There's a certain style called one-liner comedian. Yeah. And a one-liner comedian is does a joke and then goes to another joke, not related, not necessarily related to that joke. Like Stephen Wright. Perfect example. It's a small world, but I wouldn't want to paint it. There you On go. to something else. Yep. Um, and and that goes back to Henny Youngman or mm-hmm. Rodney Dangerfield is another example. And now Mitch Hedberg, who's passed away. Yep. And Dimitri Martin, who we speak spoke of earlier, they they sometimes do what I call one liner plus. Well, they do the one liner plus three or four tags on it, mm-hmm. but it's still the same idea, and then jump to another thing. So yes. we like that's something you would learn in my class. Okay, that's a great lesson. Those are things <laughs> that well, no, those are things that even someone who considers themselves to be a serious comedy fan yeah. might never actually sit down and take the time to break down the structure of a joke. Here's something else I found fascinating. I bring brought in some guest speakers. Okay. Two of them were Margaret Cho okay. and Jeffrey Ross, the Roastmaster General. 
Uh, those are you have great. to say that you can't just say Jeffrey Ross. Right, so you, otherwise you get sued. Uh, those, those <laughs> I don't want to get sued. I don't want to no, put every earwolf in. Yeah, two great choices. Here's the fascinating common denominator between the two of them. Besides, they're willing to they go to my class. Both have <laughs> Jewish parents. Both of them took comedy classes when they were starting. Wow. Uh huh. That was my reaction as well, Sam Levine. How about that? I know. They they had comedy classes available yeah. to the two of them. No, I mean, not at the same time, but one no, in San no, Francisco, I, one in New York. I yeah. get it. That's yeah. how unusual back in, and I mean, I don't want to give away the ages no, of either of those people. this was late. Well, Margaret's the mid, mid to late 80s. Okay. And Jeff, I think, is early 90s or something like that. Yeah, yeah, So it's kind of, okay. you know, 25 But that's surprising. Years. I mean, I— I was surprised. I, that is surprising. I, I, around the same time, around early 90s, 92, 93, was when I first got really curious about it, and I bought the book. I'm sure you knew about the book, the Judy Carter book. Yep, yep. How did you stand up? Uh, that that book was everything to me. That that was in lieu of me what being able to attend What did you learn? What do you remember you gleaned from Judy Carter's book? You're not going to like my answer. <laughs> well, that, that now I'm even more curious. Okay. If, ugh, Keep I'm, it brief. I will. If you flip to that book on like page four, <laughs> it was like it was like finding your voice. Yes, yeah. And then it said uh, – and then right under it, it said something like, if you are black, gay, Jewish, or one or two other things, skip this chapter and immediately go to chapter six or whatever it was. And then you skip to chapter six. It was like – you are so in, in unique. Your your way of looking at life is so different. Boom. That's your voice. You're welcome. Was basically the crux of it. Oh, that's interesting. So she was saying if you have this kind of ethnic identity, you already have a voice. Yes, if you have this in your in your background, if mm-hmm. you were any of this number of things, that is a huge leg up on if you're just another uh say you it. know say it Catholic white guy. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Uh yeah, basically, because I mean, if you uh, if you think about what I learned from your um, most second to most recent episode of yeah. uh, your podcast, the nineteen eighties. Yes, um, you, thank you for listening. My I really pleasure. I, I listened it. to three episodes of it and enjoyed every one of them. Um, uh, in that one, you talked about the giant comedy boom. Yes, of the nineteen eighties, which anyone who knows even a little bit about comics uh, comedy no, knows something happened. Yes, the eighties were it was the that what the the dot com boom was to the nineties. Yeah, that was what stand up had in the eighties. And we described it in ve- like as a plague, mm-hmm. like <laughs> clubs were opening up over. <laughs> yes, <laughs> there was the Starbucks comedy clubs were the Starbucks. It's a great analogy. I wish I of the nineteen eighties. Yeah. yeah, and um, and so. The, the problem was with each of these new clubs, you had 85% 28-year-old white dudes to fill those spots. Right, uh, yeah. So that was the problem. It was there, were, there, were, there was not enough voices that were different than that. And well, so that changes what, in the what, 90s. Yes, it certainly does. But when Judy wrote that book in, I'm going to say, 90, 91, mm-hmm. probably, she was saying like, hey, I go to clubs. I see what is underrepresented. If you are one of these voices, lean into that because that's yeah, – you're no, not – people still, aren't hearing that. a weird that. piece of advice Look, just because if you think of the difference between Shelley Berman's voice and Bob Newhart's voice and mm-hmm. – uh, you know, I'm not saying it was great advice. I gotcha. I'm just telling you. You asked me what you I said. The book from the was book. the world to you, and then you told me one thing that was wrong with it. You asked me very <laughs> different questions. We can play I back said the that, tape. You go ahead. I know what I said. <laughs> I said that book was my version of having a comedy oh, okay. class. So, I, for all I, what if what if kids come away from your class going, I didn't learn anything. Or he gave uh, bad advice. He told me to talk about my troubled home life. I would never do that. What if you did? I did. What if somebody th- took a class and that was the advice their teacher gave? No, uh, I understand. I understand. That's I'm all sorry. I'm I thought you. I thought you said that book was the world to you and like it inspired you. No, there and were now I know. there were plenty of helpful tips. Yeah, it, it certainly gave me the ability to begin writing my own jokes. Uh, that I would eventually tell on stage and learning the format of the traditional format of how stand-ups told jokes. Set up in a punchline. Yep. Sometimes not that easy. Not as I know because people know it's coming. Sometimes you got to meander. Sometimes you got to do the rule of threes. <laughs> okay. No. 
No? Yes. Yes. Do you teach the rule of comedy? Do. It does come up. <laughs> that, Sometimes believe it, or it not, does. It does come up. Sometimes I had an old joke when I was 13 years old where, I, you know, my father does this, this, and then the third thing was, oh, but that's a joke. He doesn't really do that. I don't oh. even remember what the joke was. Right, but I right. remember it was about my dad. I used to joke about my dad a lot on stage. Good. Very personal. That's, that's what you do when you're 13 years old. Who, well, what, you started way younger. Who else, do I, who else can I joke about at that age? Your teachers? I used to do that too. Your rabbi? No. Your dad? My dentist? My your, dentist is also dad. my father. Yeah. You know that. I knew that. Yeah. Um, all right. So we've – speaking of meandering, um, so – all right. So uh, 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 so you brought in Margaret Cho and Jeffrey Ross, the Roastmaster General – don't want to get sued – to speak to your class. You said there was also a third person, a guest speaker at your oh, class. Oh, um, Oh, yeah, the booker from The Tonight Show. Oh, yeah. now that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who is currently booking The Tonight Show? That's a guy named Michael Cox. Wait, it's, hey, I want it or to, not. He's got a name. And he is, uh, he wanted to do it. He what? wanted to do it. That's a great, I know, that's a I was, great we, guest speaker. I, I know, I know. I mean, that's like sending a casting director to a room full of, of learning actors, young actors. That's right. very helpful. Yeah, he was very, he was very inspirational. It was really good. Um, Thank you, Michael. Yeah, thank you, Michael, on behalf of the comedians <laughs> who will eventually be on the Tonight Show someday. Um, that's uh, that's terrific. So, what uh, what what do you think were the the best lessons that the two established comedians and, oh. and Michael were well, able to? Well, certainly for on? Margaret. Oh, yeah, and also I brought in Beth Stelling. Oh, who was a, she was writing on Crashing at the yeah. time and had done two Conans. Maybe three, at least two Conans, mm -hmm. and we watched both of her Conans. This is what she didn't like about her first one. Mm -hmm. which we, so it was like very close to their level. And people in the class were like, "Oh my god, I did an like an open mic with her three weeks ago because she still works around sure. working out her bits." And uh, so she was she was in a way I feel the best because she was close to. It They're, wasn't just like, "Oh, I'm meeting a big star, Margaret Cho right. or, or Jeffrey Ross." And she had a great piece of advice, which was, don't be a psycho. Hmm. I know that sounds like, you know, everyone's quirky and stuff, but you, you're going to be hanging around with people. You're going to be doing clothes. Like, don't be a psycho. Right. Just, the, you know, you can be eclectic and crazy on stage and all that, but you can't be a psycho. Like, yeah. this is, we're all in this together. <laughs> we're all in this yeah. together. I thought that was great, really great advice. That is good advice. Because I've seen so many comedians who are just like, I can't be around this. I can't be around right. this energy. I yeah no. I do you know I, people like that. I know multitudes of people like that as, over the years. Uh, but you know, it's it's the when I was a kid, I, I almost all of my teachers in school I thought were like generally miserable people. Like they rarely smiled. Like it seemed like they were unhappy to be there at the job, and they were taking that unhappiness out on the kids. And so I had this theory like. Do unhappy people gravitate towards teaching or right. do people go in with the best of intentions? But most of my teachers in public school had been there like 20 years. Yeah. I was like, did it's it a just burn. wear it's them a, down? Yeah, it's a burnout job. There's no question. And so that I that then I thought when I was a literal teenager doing stand-up, like it was the best part of my day. I looked forward – to it all day, like, I'm going to go into the city tonight, I'm going to do two different clubs, this is going to be great, and then I'd get there, and I'd see the comics who were 15 years older than me, and they'd be having conversations with other comics, and be like, oh, what are you up to? I got to go fucking do a show out in fucking Queens, and I got to get up early and do fucking radio tomorrow, F I fucking hate everything. Yeah, they didn't like it. Yeah. They didn't like it, because they, with the grind, they hated the grind, and, and so I wondered, like, shit, that's a that slightly be... That's a slightly different thing. That's okay. a slightly, that's, that's, People who get embittered yeah. by either the the absolute s sheerness of the mountain you have to climb to be a successful <laughs> stand-up. Yes. It is so steep, mm -hmm. and there's millions of people like trying to get, you know, and right. it's, it seems nearly, and that they just, what, whatever you have to do for that, and mm -hmm. they didn't like that. And then there's the comedians that are just embittered by other people's successes. Oh, that's, I would say, prevalent in <laughs> That comedy, sounds more like what you're talking about. Yeah. Maybe more than any other uh, competitive field because it's – I always got the feeling of if anyone on any given night where there's 10 comics, any showcase evening, you know – you, it doesn't matter if you killed or bombed. You're like, why not me? 
Wh- right, why, right. why does the guy who went up after me, why does he get a shot on yeah, Conan? I know. What the fuck? <laughs> fuck that guy. I'm just as good as that guy. It's so, because it's so close to, to, to you're so close to success every time. And so I think it breeds that competitive nature between comics more so than, than any other. But I'm not even talking about competitive. I'm talking yeah. about you're embittered. Yes, like you, it does. It does. Absolutely. It really does. embitters you embitters and you're like, you. yes. And I early on learned not to do that. Like mm-hmm. that, I felt was a great lesson. Yeah, yeah. That I, put, I, I was the same way. I had, and you know who was the person? Oh, I, I will tell you my person. You tell me yours. Go. No, I'm going to tell you mine next. Oh, I have to go first. You have to go first only because. Well, okay, I'm not going to believe mine. Mine is Jerry Seinfeld. Wow. Mine is Jerry Seinfeld. He said, and this is he was like a senior when I was a freshman. So you know, he was already had already basically left for. L- uh, L.A. by the time I started doing stand-up. Yeah. But he would come back to the comic strip, you know, the yeah. conquering hero. I just opened for Ann Murray, you know, like these great. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. How do you teach young children? How do you teach college-age children with these references? So uh, Ann Murray. <laughs> so he, uh, <laughs> but oh, he said, Canada. he said, you know, and he was, he's a much harder worker than I am. Mm-hmm. He writes every day and all of that. Sure. You, everyone knows yeah. the legacy of that. Yes. But he, he said, I think it was to myself and a couple other comedians kind of like, you know, looking for wisdom from them. He was like, you can't compare yourself to anyone. Mm-hmm. You just, it's, you can't, you'll never win. Right. You'll never win. I, obviously, he ends up winning the sure. whole thing. Sure. Um, but He uh, does. He won comedy. <laughs> he won it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he did. He absolutely did. <laughs> so, he, yeah. But he said, you, you just can't because... You're you. Like, that's all you have is you. Like, you can't be that, uh, you know. And yeah. it was just really, it was very freeing for me to hear that. Just like, all right, wow. whatever this how, is going to be. If how, I'm going to be a big star, am I going to be hosting the Oscars? I'm yeah. going to be doing clubs when I'm 60. Whatever yeah. this is going to be, I'm in. Yeah. Yeah. So How old were you when he gave you that advice? It's a good question. I think 56. No, I was <laughs> 25 or something. All maybe right. 25 or, How yeah. long had you been doing stand-up by then? Just a couple years. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, I got a, roughly the same piece of advice from, from Kramer, <laughs> one Jeffrey Ross. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. that's why. I wanna, is that what he said? That is what he's. I mean, not those exact words, but uh, so the two guys who helped me get my footing when I was literally yeah. twelve, thirteen years old was like, I think I could do this. Was Jeffrey Ross and Elon Gold? Oh, yeah, still uh, both. In yeah. the game, still very much in the game. Uh, Elon's dad, Sid, was my first manager, and so wait that's, a minute. Yep. Elon Gold is born into the business? I don't know which came first, Elon's career or his dad's managerial career. But they may have developed at the same time. Doesn't matter. His dad, Sid Gold, he managed a lot of comics. Old and young. What are you what is this face? What are you what are you nodding at? I don't understand this. this I think weirdness. everyone on the podcast can hear my face right now <laughs> because I always, I'm always like, oh, of course, somebody's dad's in the business, and that's how they get in. I don't think I didn't have anyone. I didn't have anyone. I'm embittered. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. What is wrong with you? The thing. Anyway, so Elon and yeah. uh, Jeff were the ones who oh, that's nice. helped me figure out what to do on stage and what to do. You know, I don't know, say what to do when you're bombing, right. but they were like, "You're gonna bomb. You're gonna bomb a lot uh, right. because you're a young comic and you're literally 13 years old." And you know, and then it was Jeff who was like. Do not pay attention to the other comics on stage with you. They'll, some of them will have great shows. Some of them will have bad sets. Yeah, that's good like, advice. It it's hard. It's hard. Yeah, he's like sometimes you'll you'll see them and their name will be on a marquee and mm-hmm. you'll wonder why isn't my name on that marquee? He's like that's the wrong way to go about this. I remember that specifically. He said their name will be on the marquee, yours won't, and you might get angry. Don't get angry. That's not how this works. That's, thank you, Jeff. Yeah, Marie, thank you, Jeff. Ross, I never forgot that. Roastmaster General. Um, and uh, so yeah, so it's nice to know that. God, how old am I? That twenty four years later, he's still willing to go oh, he's, out. He's doing great. These he's days. oh, he's crushing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Uh, wait, did I read that in the press? I did read it in the press. So this is not privileged information anymore. He just sold a show. Uh, historical. Oh roasts. yeah, they're taping it next week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's. I mean, but just so you know, yeah. In the Wayne Fetterman, professor of comedy mm-hmm. at USC, they did a historical roast on the Dean Martin's roast. On Dean Martin's Celebrity Roast. Uh-huh. Want to know who they roasted? Who was that? Father of our country, George Washington. Wow. 
I'm just saying this idea has been around for a while. Yeah, so has, you know, setups and punchlines, but we still let new No, I didn't mean in. it that way. I've just meant— No, I, I know what you mean. I thought it was I didn't want to take anything away from so, him. Well, well I'm I mean, not taking anything away from him. Oh, They're, good. I'm saying it's just like, it's just interesting to me that a show as old-fashioned as the Dean Martin Celebrity Roast would do something that edgy or— Creative yeah. at that time. That Did, was more right. But you're not impressed by that. No, I am impressed by that. And I would expect if anyone I personally knew would know that, it would be you. All right. You knew Run Silent, Run Deep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> that is true. So anyway, um, so that's wonderful. So they, you had some wonderful guest speakers in this class. So um, to get way, way, way back to where we started here, so you – uh, said that the podcast you're doing oh, was yeah. almost an offshoot of this class you were right, teaching because, at USC. No, it was that would that sort of inspired me ah. to be like, all right, I can talk about the history of comedy now because I have a little more than just like he's been kicking around the club since the mid '80s. You know, like I have a little more the USC. You, you mean you? That that you 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 think people would think of you? He's been kicking around the club since the 1980s. Yeah. That's You've been true. doing a lot more than I kicking understand. around the clubs. <laughs> I understand. I'm not trying to. I'm saying to you that that's. <laughs> the, I think that's an accurate description of my comedy career. I'm still doing clubs. It's not. I'm not okay. a theater comic. So I don't mean it in a bad. Okay, I know good. you're making a. You're, good. I, no, I don't want. You're very self-deprecating. It's and uh, I know you know that, and it's nothing new, and it's one right. of my favorite things about you. But I will not sit here and let you go. Yeah. Yeah, way, and he's been kicking around the club since 1980. You have had some very, very prestigious I said positions. The mid, I said the mid-80s. Whatever. Um, so, the, uh, so, yeah, so that kind of was like, all right, let's try to do this. Mm-hmm. And so we're, we're, we'll see. We'll see. If we, if we go to season two, uh-huh. then we're going to do like a deep dive. One of my Ooh. ideas is what I'm calling the forgotten stand-up specials. The Showtime specials. Oh, like right. Richard Jenny crazy from the yeah, heat? Richard Jenny, Carol Lever, like Roseanne had mm-hmm. one. Like it was a, a lot of them. Yeah. So and they're like gone, like, gone. <laughs> Cannot find them anywhere. <laughs> gone. How are you going to find them? I'm I'm a good researcher. All right. I'm a really good researcher. Are you? You know how to use the internet? And I'm stuff? I, even before pre-internet. I was an excellent researcher. Yeah, you like. Remember, I wrote a book on Pistol Pete Maravich. This is true. I yeah. forgot. Do your students know you wrote this book? Uh, they. <laughs> They do. They make fun of me once in a while. <laughs> do the, now, this is a serious question. Do you wear your Converse when you teach? Yes, I do. And how do your students feel about that? They're great. They're okay They're with great. it? They're great. Professor okay. Fetterman comes in. I have a backpack. Can you, do you know what this is? This was given to me by a student. Alpha Chi Omega? Do you know what that means? Uh, no. It's a famous a sorority is that from pretty? Uh, not pretty. Uh, no, that's that just from, from no. It's not. It's or? not like legally blonde. It's from USC. <laughs> I got a promotional backpack from a. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, what, I kind of feel company, like Jan Sport. Right? I'm familiar with them. Yeah, <laughs> I, I kind of feel like uh, that. That's your 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 playing favorites, though. If you wear that around campus. Oh, I see. Oh. Good point. I, I would worry. Like if you saw someone else from a rival yeah, sorority, they're they very like, competitive. Those sororities and, and okay, fraternities. Okay, I don't know. You know. I was not in a fraternity at college. So. I, I was not either. In yeah. as much as I never attended college. Oh, well, that would. Make well, it I'll difficult. tell you though. If I had, I probably would not have been asked to join any fraternity. Okay. Well, let's talk about things unless that they didn't needed, happen. Unless and they how needed you would somebody to, to like cook the books. <laughs> Maybe I could have done that. Oh, Jesus. I would have done that. You know what? For my for if they let me in, I owe it to them to at least hide the million dollars that we were, you know, laundering through the mob. I don't even know how to respond to this. Uh, you know what? I'm going to go back to college. <laughs> <laughs> I really want this to become my reality. Do it. Do it. That I, sounds like I would. The only way I would go to college is if I could get into USC and take your college uh, class. It's fun. That campus is like it's like being on a movie set. I don't know if you've ever been there. I've been on that campus many times. Uh, uh, my my pal uh, Leonard Malton. I'm also yes. your pal Leonard. Malton. Yes. Everyone's pal Leonard Malton. Uh, I have to imagine he still teaches that course there, but he has taught a course there for many many years, and I have I have uh, attended it and spoken at it a couple times. And uh, USC is a magnificent campus, um, and you it you it smells like money. Oh, it's yeah, it's wealthy. That it's wealthy. camp that there is. Literally, the sidewalks on the campus are made out of $50 bills. Okay. That's Literally. Not, okay. I don't know. 
You can't. You don't, you don't know what the word literally means, <laughs> and you don't know what <laughs> cement looks like. So I don't know how to. Don't know. <laughs> I'm not a hundred percent sure on this. Yeah. I think, you're wrong, and you're wrong. I think the Oxford English Dictionary, uh, or the OED, if you will, the 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 gold standard of our English language. I believe a couple of years ago they added the, the figuratively as one of the definitions to the word literally. Oh, oh, I see. That figuratively is yeah. easily. Okay, and, and the, the way the OED works, um, uh, for those who don't know. Jesus. Go no, ahead. No, this is important to know. Do Language it. is important, Wayne. I agree. I know. They do not – most uh, uh, dictionaries will uh, – s- the first definition of a word is cited by relevance. So the most common usage for the word home, let's say, is the house, the place a person lives in. But – the OED would work w- – does it chronologically. When so it the, came in, when yeah. it came into – you know, when it was part of the lexicon, what did it mean then? And so that's how it goes down. So the most recent addition to the word literally is the definition figuratively. And that is sad. It's a sad sign of our times. Do you know who I think wouldn't make that mistake? Any of the students in Professor Fetterman's comedy class. You know what? Because you got the smart kids. Some of those kids are smart. They better be. Some of those, they got into USC. I know. It's surprising that school is held in such high regard. I mean, well, <laughs> yeah. I just got fired. <laughs> I'm talking, I'm just, By the way, I'm I'm just, just, <laughs> I just got a text. <laughs> I'm fired. Just let that linger there. <laughs> um, well, no. I think because people think of the film program when they think of USC. Yeah, you know, and and it is it is well, considered have, one of the most prestigious film programs. Oh, of, have of you any seen? I'm university. sure you've seen the Spielberg uh, Spielberg sure. building and the Lucas. Yes, <laughs> it's like something out of Rome. Yeah, it's, it's like the Parthenon. Yes, <laughs> it is exactly like the Parthenon. Yeah, of of Rome. No, it's it's a it's a magnificent campus uh, with a storied history, and it is adding to that history by having yeah. adjunct professor Thank you. Wayne Fetterman teach. What's the name of your course? I think it's uh, stand up too. I think it's called it's stand up too. Stand up too. Yeah. Now is that T O O? No, it's T. It's like you. You gotta really. There's a lot of people. My class sells out. Like sells out. Well, I sell. It's what's the word for it? What would be the word for it? Um, reaches capacity. Yeah, reaches capacity okay. very quickly. And, uh, attendance. Is very big. I'm in demand. Over highly there. attended. Yeah. Uh, well, that's great. Could I ever come in and sit in on one of your classes? Is there a chair in the back? I As could, a matter of fact, there is. Can I lean up against the wall? We, you, there's a chair for, uh, for people to come in and audit and watch the class. You can't, but there is. Oh. A, there's a specific space right. where can people any come of in. our listeners. <laughs> if I'm not allowed, maybe some of them want in on this. <laughs> yes, of course. All right. Um, well, that's very exciting. So, so you've got the podcast, which again is called "The History of Stand Up," and uh, uh, where can our? Oh, well, you already said they can find it in the usual places, right? And yeah, I want to make sure I'm covering all the. No, places. you're doing good. Sorry wanna, to shake my head. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. very disapproving. And then those <laughs> students who are already in the USC uh, uh, School. Uh, of the arts, I don't know what the full title is of USC. They can they can sit in on your class if it's not sold out that week, or buy tickets on StubHub, I guess, <laughs> to your class if it is sold out that week. Uh, and so, so Wayne, uh, uh, before I let you go, I want to talk about um, this last season of the HBO show Crashing. Yes. Uh, which I watch and enjoy thoroughly. It stars our pal Pete Holmes. You're talking about season two. Season two of Crashing. Yeah. Season three is coming up. Yep. Uh, season two of Crashing starring our good pal Pete Holmes, produced by our other pal Judd Apatow, written by a magnificent group of writers. Including uh, Beth Stelling. Including Beth Stelling. Uh, I think, uh, let's see, Fitzy my pal is on that. Joel, Joel Madison is a yeah. consulting producer. Yep. Fitzsimmons is, is a producer writer on it. Okay. Uh, yeah, so this is... Is a this is one of the more realistic shows I've ever seen depicting oh. the world of of stand up, specifically in New York, specifically like if you are an unknown or even a slight known, what it is like trying to get your foot in the door of New York stand up, which is something I know you know well. Uh, yeah, a, but a uh, to tell you the truth, when I started doing stand up in New York, the scene was slightly different than it. Is now. And it is now. Fair enough. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Slightly, was, but I mean, there's similarities. Right. right. There like, were only two clubs. It was 1945. Okay. We just gotten out of the war. 
Are you? Yes. Am I? Am I wrong? No. Yeah. Did I read somebody else's no, bio? Lenny, Lenny Bruce was at one. Lenny Bruce Shecky was at one. the other Mrs. one. Mrs. Maisel was at that other thing. club. Was oh, she was opening for Shecky Green. There was there was actually three big clubs in the city when I was starting. Out. What were the three clubs? Improv, Catch a Rising Star, and the Comic Strip. The, the big and three. And then yeah, and then Caroline's opened, mm-hmm. and it was so. Again, if you take my class, <laughs> dude, no, I'm kidding. Listen to the history of stand up if you want to know I, all about I, it. I, I could not endorse that podcast Thank more, you. by the way. Uh-huh. Uh, it, it starts off great. Uh, really, I, I, I started many hours ago by saying it's heavily produced. Yeah. And I, I don't mean that in a negative way. It is wonderfully produced. Thank you. You really get we the work whole hard. picture. We work, I actually work hard on it. Good. Yeah, yeah. I, I would expect nothing less from you. Thank you. Um, uh, so, yeah, so Crashing, so crashing season 3 season has already been shot. Are you? Do you return? Does I do return. return oh, to, that's so exciting! To clear up the fact that a lot of people thought I had Hodgkin's disease, right? Because I say in the episode, I have Hodgkin's disease. That's correct. Yeah. So they thought because Artie Lang plays a heroin addict and yep. has a has a heroin situa- problem yeah, in has real a life. Situation with heroin. Yes. yes. Yeah. So, so so they thought maybe Wayne is 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 bringing a little bit of real life to this yeah, goofy but show. But I wasn't. I wasn't. I was no. just more to create a uh, right. uh, to do a benefit right. for it and so for uh, Artie and that's uh, so Pete tries to do the benefit right. Artie flakes on him. Right. So then he has to. He realizes. You know what he realizes? You can't help an addict. You can't. Well, they have to be. They, they want to have yeah, to help yeah, themselves. They have to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, it's. A, I loved being part of that episode. I mean, I feel like. Can I tell you the important TV shows I've been part of? Please, Wayne. It was part of Curb. Was amazing. The best. Yeah. Um, can I give you a little bit of trivia? I love trivia, as you well okay. know. Okay. I play a character named Dean Weinstock. On Curb Your Enthusiasm. Is he Jewish? Named after, <laughs> super Jewy, named after Lotus Weinstock, oh. who was a comedian and Lenny Bruce's last girlfriend. Wow. Little bit of trivia. Hold on to it. Tweet it out. And then uh, and then also being on Larry, you know, playing Larry Sanders' brother sure. and stuff like that. And now to, like, be there with Artie Lang, you know, and he's going through this. Yeah. It's so heartbreaking and inspiring, yeah. you know, and just, just riffing at that comics table mm-hmm. at the cellar, which is, you know, that club is, to use the word killing it would be an understatement. It is killing I it. feel really fortunate to yeah. have been, like, through those. And again, I don't. You right. know, I'm not trying to oversell myself. But yeah, I just, no, I mean, this is yeah. not bad for a guy who's been, you know, mostly kicking around, around the clubs, clubs since the mid-80s. That's how I just, that's on my, that's my, on my card. <laughs> <laughs> if, do you still have a card? No, I don't, I don't. Uh, I remember for years, <laughs> actors would have the yeah, little yeah, cards yeah. with their picture yeah, on it and the contact course. info. And so I ha- I met somebody a million years ago who was like, you got to get those, man. Yeah. You never, Nobody's going to know. You got to get those. And I have, I remember They're asking. branding. I feel like it's not that horrible uh, a thing. No, but I remember— You felt like it reeked. No, because I asked a casting director about it once. I was like, yeah. do I need cards like that? And then um, uh, uh, her response was, well, that depends. Are you leaving them in the pile of headshots outside of casting director's offices? And I said, no. She said, then you don't need those. If you're already getting into the casting director's offices, they know who you are. See, this is the thing: is you didn't realize the person with the card isn't getting a casting director's. I office. didn't realize that because they they seemed like they knew yeah, what they were doing. See? Right? There's many right. levels. There's many levels. Look, and that's I the thing. still remember. I still remember when I couldn't get a SAG card in New York, mm. and it was horrific. The level of just like we don't even. Want, I don't care how talented you are, Wayne Fetterman. Yeah, we're not interested in you. S- the you- Screen Actors Guild said that on voicemail to you. <laughs> they left you a message <laughs> on your on your single cassette <laughs> yeah. uh, answering it was, machine. It was actually at a phone service. I don't know <laughs> if you know oh, what you that is. Oh, you had a is. service. <laughs> yeah, at he's a, got a service. Had a phone answering service so called Seven Lively Arts. But um, <laughs> the but yes, yeah, it was. I mean, the number the and I just remember that feeling of like. So your job is like suss out new talent, and you're not interested unless I can somehow. Again, we talked about that wall you have to climb. It's the, it's the worst catch twenty two is yeah, getting yeah. into the union. And ultimately, I got in, but and but still, that feeling, I just, uh, I just, I re- it really bothered me quite a bit. Just because it just bothered me. Okay. So when I see people like struggling to get in, I am very sympathetic. 
I, as the, as am I. I I just uh, last weekend I was in Michigan, and uh-huh. I was talking to uh, a, a large amount of students at the Interlochen Arts Academy. Yeah, and uh, they many of them are in the, the the motion picture arts program there. They want to be actors, writers, yeah. directors, uh, musicians, what have you. And uh, you know, I went there to give them the straight dope, man. I'm... It was no look. It was no Professor Fetterman's <laughs> okay. comedy. Too. I like doing to let people Stand follow their to. dreams. I let people. No, I, and I use actually. I didn't say the the straight dope was give yeah. it up, kids. Yeah. yeah. That's what it sounded that was, like. No, the straight dope was this is a really competitive, hard uh, line of work you guys all want to be in. So if you're going to do it, don't half-ass it. You Although know? some people get in right away. <laughs> sure. <laughs> there, it is true. It is true. I've seen it time and time again. Like, sure. Some people have it like right away. Did it's, you get into after first? Yes. Me too. <laughs> It took me. It took me. That was our back door. It that took was me the back door. Three extra years to get into SAG after I got into AFTRA. Yeah, but back then it was very different. Yeah, it was, okay. back then. Okay. Well, no, grandpa. back then. Really? Yeah, okay. I'm grandpa. Yeah, well, yeah, I never used the word back then. <laughs> Maybe I did. Back then. <laughs> Maybe then. Back in the '90s. Yeah. Television was AFTRA. Or no, yeah. television was – yeah, television was, was AFTRA. Because it's the American Federation of Television and Radio Artists. That's exactly right. So it was a lot easier to get into AFTRA. You had to be Actually, in, I had to join had AFRA to in, first. I was in just the right <laughs> – there was a version of that in the 30s. Just, just for radio <laughs> Before artists. there was television. Uh, Me, Edgar Bergen got in the same week. <laughs> Fred uh, Allen and Fibber McGee. We all came in together. <laughs> my class yep. – literally well, 12 people un- unsubscribing to my class or dropping out of my class. All right. Was, I did Senior Winces speak at your graduation? Well, I wish I would remember the name. What was it, the dummy's name? <laughs> oh, God. Um, um, God, that's Yeah, that's oh, son of a bitch. I can't think of Johnny, either. Johnny. Johnny. Johnny? Johnny, yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Thought I? Yeah. Thought I. All right, that, this has been great. Oh, oh, you're wrapping it up. No, for me? I am. <laughs> Gosh, I thought you. Were, I literally. I was, you took the words right out of my mouth. You can't not be. I a host. read you. I read you pretty well. You did read me. You saw in my eyes. Yeah, I yeah. was about to thank you for coming in. But now that you've jumped the gun on me, I want to hear all about uh, <laughs> your. No, fuck that, um, Wayne. Seriously, though, thank you. Um, I know that you. This is the chat show I'm on. This is Kevin Pollock's chat show. Kevin, we miss you. Kevin, we miss I you. I love you, dude. I'd like to think that you would have given Kevin about half of the trouble you've given me today. I feel like I've been delightful. What are you talking you about? You were, you, there were a couple of moments. Okay, so there were some eye rolls and judgments, but here's the thing. That's what I have come to love and expect from you. And that's why when I had to, and this is true for our, our listeners at home, when I had to bully you into coming on this show this week, <laughs> Wayne did not want to come on. He said, I, oh, you've had me on a bunch. And I was like, yeah, but we're going to talk about the new stuff. We're not going to go down, Wayne Fetterman, this is your life. We're going to save that for the next time we have you on. I appreciate it. And you it. said, for the record, you said, I feel like I've been on the show four times. And I don't know if that's true or not. It, it probably is accurate that you've been on four times, so this may be your fifth time. Wayne, we have been doing this show for almost... 10 years. So for like you it's to a have, little Fetterman heavy. For where you to have been I seriously on do. only four times in nine and a half years, those are relatively low numbers. Okay. Um, well, so, thanks for having me. Thanks. And no, you. thank you for for coming on. Thank you for at least always answering my call. Well, you're welcome. When I when I ask you to come on, because I feel like uh, we always learn something when you come on. Um, I mean, we didn't, and nobody had to pay. Like the students uh, taking stand up to T O, like Dumb and Dumber Two. Remember how they did that? Yes. I almost feel like you. It should have been called Stand Up Two, T O. Right, right. And then let people wonder. Uh, and people should download your uh, podcast or stream it. However, they if you download, if, if you you're stream, interested in the history, we go from again vaudeville of, to of Netflix. Uh, that first episode is particularly enlightening. What? You heard we went back to the first one? Yeah. The Frank Fay and all yes, of that? Oh. Yes. I wanted to hear how you guys got started because that's the one that was probably the most produced of all of them because it's the one you had the longest to prepare for. Absolutely wrong. Wow. <laughs> yeah. No, these later ones are way has way more clips and stuff in it. Okay. Well, then maybe uh, uh, produced wasn't the way I meant it. I, the one researched? The one you've been thinking about the longest? No? 
Okay, well then I'm even more impressed because it seemed like Thank there you. was a wealth of information there that most people, myself included, didn't know. I didn't know about, about a lot of that, and now I do, and I feel better for it, and I've always considered myself a comedy nerd. So I would say if you consider yourself a comedy nerd, your education is not complete until you've heard Wayne's podcast, The History of Stand-Up, and until you've taken his course, Stand-Up 2, <laughs> T-O-O-O, at uh, USC. And Wayne, where can people find you on online? Do you do online yeah, stuff? Yeah, a little bit. Where a little bit. It? I'm on Instagram, but I'm very rare. It's hard for me to – it's called Insta Fetterman, and then okay. Twitter is at Fetterman. At Fetterman, F-E-D-E-R-M-A-N. 100% right. Okay, that's great. And if they want to come visit you at your home, can you give us uh, the address? The new home? Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to say, give that out? All I can say, it's in a dicey neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, I, that's the adjunct professor salary. <laughs> I, uh, I I would expect nothing less from you, my friend. Uh, all right, well, give me just one minute to wrap things up. Okay. But uh, from the bottom of my cold, dead heart, thank you, Wayne. You're welcome. For giving us uh, some time. Uh, this this day. Uh, well, that's it. Uh, uh, until next time on Kevin Pollock's Chat Show. But of course, the show just doesn't happen with me just showing up and speaking into a microphone. Uh, there are people that help out, including Chat Show himself, Mr. Kevin Pollock, our head writer, Jamie Fox, Jason McIntyre, and Corey Levin, our producers and working on post, Devin right here in the booth, the overlords. Wow, applause. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Devin. You did a great job today. You, you lowered the temperature in here right before we started, and that, sir, gets you huge points in my book. I'm a sweaty man. Um, and then, uh, and then, uh, of course, Earwolf, uh, the, the wonderful people that host us. Uh, so until next time, uh, you may fuck off. <laughs>